Philippians chapter 1. Don't you just love people that you make fun of? Every once in a while she brings me a present. The other day she brought me a pack of coupons for Burger King. So I've tried to cool my jets for a few weeks till she forgets what she's done. Because uh, I don't want to hurt my Whopper coupons. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1, verse number 1, if you'd follow along, please. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons. I'm going to stop right there uh, for the reading uh, this morning. And I've entitled my remarks, Partakers of Grace. Partakers of Grace. We may end up seeing more about that next time than this time. <coughs> But anyway, isn't it good to be a partaker of grace, y'all? God's so mighty good to us. Let's pray together and ask Him for a blessing. He's the only one that can do it. But Father, we really believe that. We come in Jesus' name, and we're asking You to give us today what only You can through Your words. Your words, not ours. It's a crime and a shame what we've attempted to do to it down through the years and centuries. But there it still stands. So many of its detractors and opponents have come and gone. But there your word stands for all ages. And God, we want, we're asking, we hunger and thirst, we desire. As the psalmist, we pant after the truth of your word. Because it's your word that enables us to live the victory that Christ is giving us. So, Lord, please pour us out a blessing here this morning. We ask it in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Uh, we call ourselves disciples of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about denomination, but uh, by way of title. What does that mean? If someone were to ask you, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus, what would you tell them? And I hope you know the answer to this. I'm sure you do. Where would you go to in the Bible? Uh, to maybe best and quickest help someone to understand that. A good answer, not the only one obviously, but a good answer to that would be the book of John, chapter 8, <coughs> verse number 31. I believe this with all my heart. It's one of my favorite verses because it gives me understanding. Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Plain, simple statement. A disciple of Jesus Christ is someone who believes in the Jesus of the Bible and then continues in his word. That means to remain, to stay, to abide in his word. In other words, he becomes a student of the Bible. He becomes a pupil of Jesus Christ. He becomes an adherent to Jesus' words in the Bible, he becomes, as James puts it, a doer of the word. James 1, verse number 22. That's what a disciple is. I say that to get to this point. Luke 6, 13 tells us that before Jesus' death and his, resu his, his resurrection and his ascension, uh, from his group of disciples, he chose out twelve and he named them apostles. Apostles. Now, I believe, and you do too, and, and that's why I can say that with such ease, that everything that's in the Bible is there, obviously because God wanted it. There's no mistakes. That's why we use the word inerrant. No errors in there whatsoever. What God wanted to communicate, that's what he said. So from a group of disciples, 831 John, he now picks out 12 and names them, King James says, apostles. And that word names has the meaning of assigning them a title, giving them a specific name, a specific designation. Now, you'll excuse me for using maybe something uh, too simple. Around here, we have folk with titles designations. Uh, Lee is our choir director. Uh, today you might think he's Carol's punching bag. She, you got to quit beating on him. You've got to learn. Maybe we'll change our sermons. 
<laughs> just love picking on Carol. But he's been designated as the one that leads the choir. Then he's got a, uh, an assistant that too has been named or designated. And we all know many jobs like that in the churches. But anyway, uh, he named them apostles. He designated them as apostles. They're no longer merely disciples. And I'm preaching to the choir. You all know this better than I do. But now he's going to call them apostles. And that word literally means to be sent off. Or to take it in the context of the word of God, to be sent off with a mission. Something specific. I wonder what that was. Well, Matthew 28, verse number 19, Jesus told his apostles, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Do you remember that? Uh, the King James uh, uses the word teach. It's the same word used in John 8.31 for disciple. So literally, it's very fair to say that what Jesus told his apostles was, Go ye therefore and disciple all nations. Go make disciples out of all nations, all ethnos, all races, all groups. And then Matthew 28.20 he explains how this is to be done. Y'all, pardon me for pausing for just a moment. Aren't you glad for the clarity of God's Word? People make fun of us about believing stuff that ain't nobody never seen. And you guys, you'll just follow anything. No, we won't, but we will follow what the Bible says. The Bible makes it clear. I mean, there really is a golden city. You don't really believe that. Well, you may not really believe that, but we do. Amen. And there really is a street of gold and trees of life. Mm -hmm. The leaves come off of them. And they, uh, the, in fact, the Greek is therapeuo. They're therapy for the nations. The King James says it's for the healing of the nations. Mm -hmm. Anybody know of a nation that needs some healing? <laughs> to open your eye up. Good night, I reckon. It's a very clear, very, very concise and it's, it's giving us information that we don't have without it. So the Bible says that Jesus told his apostles, I want you to go everywhere and make disciples. People that believe and then continue in my work. So if you will, the job <coughs> given by Jesus to the apostles. Go into the world. Preach what you know about me, about Jesus, he says. This will result in people becoming believers in Jesus. And then when those believers assemble themselves together, we're going to call that the church. That's what the word means, right? And then when this church is together, I want you to teach these to observe everything that Jesus said. And then I thought, well, reckon what observe means. I love definitions, again, because it comes from the Bible and it makes me understand. The word observe is the same word translated multiple times in the New Testament as guard. Or watch. And it's a it's a military term. Tereo. It means to guard, to watch over, uh, to protect, uh, to preserve. So your job, guys, is to go into the world, make believers, the believers assemble, make churches, and once they're together, teach them to guard, preserve, watch over, and protect everything that Jesus commanded us to do. In other words, make disciples. Amen. People who are doers, not just hearers. So, coincidentally, the apostles, according to the New Testament, the Word of God, they lived the rest of their lives doing just exactly what Jesus 
told him to do. You say, well, how do you know that? I know you're old, but you ain't quite that old, are you? An old boy asked me the other day, how old are you, about 75? <laughs> Some of you laughed. Some of you thinking, yeah, aren't you? <laughs> Did you hear that noise? Is my bubble popping. <laughs> how do you know? Because the Bible says so. That's how. Romans 10, 18, B clause. Don't you love the details of the Word of God? Paul writes, Their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Uh, just a moment, I'll mention more about what we read in the book of Acts, but uh, we only read of about four, maybe, of the apostles. That was a group of about seven-ish that we don't read anything about. But what we know by looking at other passages is that they did what Jesus said. They went everywhere. You know. the next thing you know, they pop up here, pop up there. And we've got some traditions that have been handed down as history of the church, not in the canon of Scripture. No reason to uh, deny these, but we find about uh, or hear about apostles being... Uh, martyred in India, uh, in England, just everywhere. But they went doing, in fact, Colossians 1, 5 and 6, same sentiment. You heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come unto you as it is in all the world. These guys were, really were both apostles and disciples. They did what Jesus said. And they went into all the world doing what apostles were supposed to be doing. Now, the New Testament. The New Testament writings, we all know, made up of 27 books. <coughs> Generally speaking, 26 of these books are the results of the apostles doing what Jesus said, attempting to make disciples. We pick it up and read about... Uh, what, Peter had two epistles and, and uh, John had three epistles? That's, that's what they were doing, y'all. And that's what the New Testament writings are. And giving us the fly on the wall perspective of these old boys doing exactly what Jesus has commanded them to do. Now, as a, for instance, the book of Acts. 28 chapters, first 12 of those chapters, if you will. A partial narrative, just a partial narrative of the apostles as a group, and you remember Acts 1, Acts 2, Acts 3, they're preaching Jesus. Now they cause the ruckus everywhere they go. Amen? And wonder why that was. That's well, because they never fit in. Y'all, if you're a Christian and you're trying your best to fit in, give it up. Amen. Only way you'll fit in as a Christian <laughs> is if you backslide. Compromise. Anybody here like lizards? Nobody in here? I don't either. I tell them at my house, listen, don't come in my house. I will put my big foot on your little head. You won't be around no more. I don't like lizards. We got one kind of lizard, and I, and I don't know if it's a for real chameleon, but then cats turn colors. I looked out on my pump box one day, and there was a bright green, I mean green like lime green lizard, on the top of the pump box. Now the shingles on the pump box are brown. I'm thinking, Hoss, wake up! I don't something fix to come by and get you. Do what you do. Christians, we can't do like that. If we try to fit in, we're going to have to compromise. If you try and live the book, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. So they're preaching Jesus, causing riots everywhere they go. But, lo and behold, enough believers happened around that they formed a church in Jerusalem. Early on, y'all, 3,000 souls saved in one, after one sermon. Remember Acts chapter 2? What in the world kind of preaching was going on? Y'all are thinking, well, something different than what we're used to. <laughs> You're right. I wish it wasn't so, but it is. And then there was a church formed in Samaria. Remember, Jesus says, I want you to preach. Go to all the world. I want you to start in Jerusalem. Then I want you to go where? Samaria. <laughs> what a coincidence. 
Then we're told we'll make our way on up a few more chapters, church down in Antioch. It's like they're doing what they were told, amen. Uh, in the early chapters of the book of Acts, we're given some specifics, not a whole lot, but a few specifics about Peter, about John, about James, the brother of John, and then James, uh, also known as the son of Alphaeus, or James the Less. Would you like to be known as so-and-so the Less? We got Tommy, and then we got Tommy the Less. Greg and Greg the Less. That might pop somebody's bubble. But anyway, he's in there. And in the book of Acts, the last 16 chapters, basically, focus on a fellow named Saul, who was formerly a Pharisee. He got saved, and he became Paul the Apostle. So we got about 16 chapters where he takes up preaching Jesus, forming churches in Asia and in Europe, doing everything in his power to make these believers into disciples, just like Jesus said. And I said all that to get to this point. That's how we got the book of Philippians. Not a coincidence. Got to be careful, y'all. And, and this is me, and, and I'm the king of uh, the uneducated. I, I mean, I'll realize that, and I, I don't mind admitting to that. But I think sometimes education takes a few more liberties than they ought. You can pick up a commentary, and they'll give you 37 reasons why the book of Philippians is included in the Bible. Well, there may be 37, but it don't take but one for me. God wanted it there. Amen. You can't trace God's hand. Anybody here ever try and trace God's hand? I can't even trace my wife's hand or feet. She came in last night. I love talking about her when she's gone. <laughs> That way I don't feel guilty. When she's here, I talk about her, but I don't feel guilty. Mm -hmm. I've lost my credit card. I'm thinking, what a joy it is to be married. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> well, what, when's the last time you used it? Well, last time I got gas, last Saturday. Seen it since. No, I haven't seen it since. I'm thinking, reckon who around our community, other than this useless cat, <laughs> is having a time at my expense? Driving up down the road with my gas car. She said, sometimes, though, I stick it in my coat pocket when I'm real cold, when I'm pumping the gas. She went over to the coat rack, reached down in one of her coats. Oh, here it is, not to worry. I'm thinking, you just took 10 years off of the life of Methuselah. I ain't got 10 years to be wasted on stuff like that. Wonder why God did so? I ain't got a clue, y'all, but the fact that it's in the book lets me know that God wore it in there. And it's a coincidence to me that what he told the apostles to do, all you got to do is pick up the book of Philippians and the other one's in there, and you see it's exactly what God told them to do. That's why it's in there. He's letting us know what it means. And not only how it got there, but that's why we've got... Uh, the book of Philippians. If you'll remember, and I'll say this to me, not you, if I'll remember the, the apostles' job description, then and only then have I got the right perspective for picking up the book of Philippians and beginning to study it. It's not hearsay. It's not there for 37 reasons. It's there because God wanted it there and because God's apostle is doing what God told him to do and that's make me into a disciple and to make you into a disciple. How many of you use your Bible, you don't have to raise your hand, for a file cabinet? And what are you talking about? I mean, when you pick it up, what was it I heard? I better, no, she ain't here either. I'm talking about Brendan. I heard Tommy the other day. I knew better than get you that thing. Uh, he didn't tell me what he's talking about. Come find out it was a book cover, or a Bible cover. I don't know what you call them, little suitcases you put your Bible in. But he got an oversized one. And y'all who know what I'm talking about, file cabinet, know what I'm talking about. Oversized one, because the other one didn't hold enough. <laughs> Would God write new books? No. You got a cut, you got a, 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 what, a tube of lipstick. And you got a, one of them powder compacts. You got 
the scissors and their shopping list the last 14 years. You had a notebook. You got, what else you got? A scarf, gloves. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Men, don't tell me yes. Just wink or something. You know what I'm talking about. File cap. <laughs> Bible is a file. No, that's not what it's for, y'all. And, and it's not something I saw the other day. I hadn't seen it for years and years. In the middle of the Bible, they had like a register of marriages. You remember when they used to do that? We've got one of the old big family Bibles, and it's like, so-and-so is married to so-and-so. These days, they need to add a few lines in there. So-and-so divorced so-and-so. So-and-so married the wrong gender. So You know what I'm talking about? Mm. The book of Philippians is for me to open up, and every line I read, it's as if God's going, yo, listen to this. I can take you from believer status to someone who's a pupil of the Word of God and adherent of Jesus. You can become what I want you to be. I didn't know I had to become anything. I thought you just went to church. And that makes you what you are to be. Right on down to McDonald's this afternoon. Sit there a while. See if you start resembling a French fry. Anybody? Some of y'all are thinking, what ails him? <laughs> Who knows? The way my mind works. And by the way, I went to the, uh, the Chinese restaurant the other night. Uh, Lorraine, this is for you. The Chinese. I ate something. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I ain't got a clue. I ain't dead, so it must not have been poison. But anyway, that's probably why I think of some of the illustrations I do. Well, anyway, once you get firm in your brain, me, firm about why, where this thing comes from, the apostles' job descriptions, then I'm ready. Then I've got the perspective uh, that I The purpose of these epistles if you will. You say, epistle? What's an epistle? It's, that's not a female apostle. Okay? Don't get liberal on me now. Epistle is a $5 term for a letter. A letter. In fact, I guess letters going out of date, isn't it? That's back when people knew how to write. And now they turn these little things around punch buttons. And she showed me the other day some message somebody had sent. They don't spell now like we used to. What ails these people, y'all? Somebody said, man, you're old. You're outdated. Amen. And I ain't got no desire to learn no new language so I can talk to all you geeks out there. You is still spelled Y-O-U. Isn't it? No. Oh, man. The purpose of the letters, the epistles, and this is me now, so please don't take it any other way. But it's as if the apostles are breaking down into uh, understandable, bite-sized pieces all the ways of God and the laws of God and the commandments of God. I, what it is that God wants. I'm not such, now you may be, I'm not such that God can tell me one time and I've got it. I wish. Anybody here uh, old enough that when you got married they said, for better or for worse? And Lee's shaking his head. Carol's laughing. I don't know. What... I thought I knew what that meant. But I've been married for 30 years. Now I know what it meant. Hey, you're not a man of me. All right, I'll preach without it. But you may be being smart, okay? You're learning. I wish I wish I could all I wish all he had to say on the other side of them plastic flowers was, but just for better or worse, you got it? I got it. I wish God could say, hey, read Exodus 20 verses 1 through 8. You got it? I got it. But I'm not that way. And it's as if, and this is me, it's as if God said, okay, apostles, take my word, my ways, my laws, and break them down in little bite-sized pieces. Where they can start chewing on them, getting out of it every little mouthful, everything I want them to get. And I don't know how this works, y'all. You can read Philippians today, you can read Philippians next week, you can read it six months ago, six months from now. Every time you read it, you get more out of it. 
How does that work? It's God's Word. Amen. And the book of Hebrews says that God's Word is alive. You Christians believe anything you want. No, it's right in the book. I just believe what's in the book. I don't believe nothing I hear on TV. If you're a politician, don't waste your blooming breath. You ain't told a smart word since you got elected. <laughs> Heard somebody say the other day, I finally figured out when a politician lies. Just when his lips move. <laughs> I had to think about it for a while. Uh, but if it's in the book, we believe it. I may not understand it, I may not even like it, but I know it's so. Uh, so they're breaking it down, if you will. So we can grasp. So we can observe. Or in other words, guard, preserve, watch over, and protect. Or in other words, so that we really can be doers. And by the way, y'all, that's what it's all about. Amen? We ain't going to stand before God one day and pull out our resume about all the churches that we belong to. Look here, God, aren't you impressed? And look at all I did for you and in your name. Aren't you impressed? It's like some joker going to court. His lawyer says, man, get a haircut. Yep. Buy that clean shirt. Have you ever been in that situation, or at least looking? Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> y'all, what's the old saying? You can take the, the uh, sow out of the mud, but she's still a pig. And some people are just like me. You can put a necktie on them, but they still look like a bum. I, I mean, that's me. I'm not talking about other people. But good night, man. God wants to do transforming things. And he'll do it. Amen. Do it in me and do it in you. Mm -hmm. Philippians. It's an epistle. It's a letter written to the church, a place called Philippi. Philippi. Say, man, where'd you come up with that? Well, not only in the Bible, you can go look at a map today uh, in modern day Greece, and there's still a Philippi. Come on. Yeah. I've never been there. I never been to England, but I assume there's one. I ain't never been to Utah. Where else haven't I been? It ain't Virginia, North Carolina, <laughs> South Carolina. I ain't been to no place, but I feel <laughs> believe they're there. It was in ancient Greece, still in modern day Greece. If you're familiar at all with the map of what goes on over there, you remember in school, uh, one of those countries looked like a boot. You remember Italy? Looks like it's cocked, getting ready to kick a football. Follow the heel, due east. And that's, that's where uh, Philippi is. It's just off the northern coast of the Aegean Sea. Y'all didn't know I knew all this stuff, did you? <laughs> Smart, buddy. I got books. <laughs> and it was named for a fellow by the name of Philip. But the way they may connect with you, do you remember Alexander the Great? Famous Greek warrior, his daddy, Philip. Hmm. Philippi. So I ain't even gonna charge him for that part. <laughs> Philippians, the letter. Best we can figure is written by Paul. I've been heard of it. Acts 28, we're told Paul was taken to uh, Rome, do you recall? And put in jail, quote unquote. Uh, we don't know exactly what the uh, <coughs> facilities were like. I doubt they had air conditioner, color TV, and pool table. <laughs> <coughs> the kind of jail he was in appears to be what we might call a house arrest. Uh, heard a story the other day about an old boy. I, I, they didn't call it house arrest. They got some kind of gizwiz they could put on you and send you home when you're in jail. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all are thinking, yeah, you must have been to my house. <laughs> they can monitor you. And then they call you up on the phone two or three times a day, and after they ask you a few questions, you take the receiver and put it down on your little ankle bracelet there, and they tell whether you lie or not. Anybody? I didn't make that up. Say had his own hired house, so but whatever it was, he was in Rome, couldn't leave. Amen. And best we can figure, he did appear uh, at, at least in some court in Rome at, at that point, and then he's let go. They let him go for a while. This is about 63, 4, 5 AD. They let him go for what appears to be a couple years. In that first imprisonment, he ended up having to go back. 
But th that's when he wrote this book, y'all. So bottom line is, he was in jail when he wrote the letter. Now, I ain't never been in jail such that I couldn't get out. They tell me when you're in jail, you correspond with your family. They let you write letters and folks who write letters to you. Other people get to read them. That's a blessing. <laughs> but you're like, send me some tennis shoes. Send me some bubble gum. Send me some uh, Burger King coupons. Send me something. Send me cash. Paul is in jail, y'all, writing a book to the church. I thought, wait a minute. I, I'm missing something here. If I was in jail, and if I was writing a letter, I don't think he'd be trying to get somebody else to be a disciple. I think it'd be, bring me a file. <laughs> hey, get a sharp New York lawyer. Dude, but look, wait a minute now. Do you remember 2 Timothy chapter 4? 2 Timothy chapter 4. You may not remember it. Jeff may not remember it, but if we ever ordain it, he'll never forget it. I promise you that. 4 2, 2 Timothy. This is Paul telling Timothy and all of us, especially preachers, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Now, a literal translation there, uh, and it's fair, I promise you, preach the word, be found standing. Be found standing. Now, the picture being painted there is, well, I was a preacher, but something's happened that I'm going to sit down and not say quite as much. Uh, uh Paul said, be found standing in season, out of season. Literally, when it's convenient, when it's inconvenient. Convenient preaching is when you come into church, it's filled up with folk like you, Except maybe a few more amens. I don't mind amens. Some of y'all think I'm afraid of amen. I heard of a church that was trying to get rid of their preacher. Don't get no ideas. But they said, listen, we come up with a plan. We're going to amen him and amen him. and a We're going to amen him till he drops dead right in the pulpit. It would probably work. Uh, and please don't anybody take offense at this. I don't mean anything bad by it. I'm sorry we live in a day where every time you get ready to say something, you've got to issue a disclaimer through that New York lawyer. But preaching when it's convenient would be like being in a black Pentecostal church full of folks glad we ain't been here for three hours and got four more to go. You just can't help but preach. Some of y'all never been to a black church? They know how to have church, y'all. If they come here, we liable to ruin them, so be careful who you invite. <laughs> well, so that didn't go over too good. <laughs> it's when it's easy to preach. Preach, be found standing when it's easy. And there are times when it's easy. And in all seriousness, it's when it's like standing before a crowd like you folks who want to hear the Word of God. I don't want no Reader's Digest condensed version, Don, amen. I don't want what Oprah says. I don't know. I don't care what the president says. I want to know what God's book says. That's when it's easy to preach. But then he says preach when it ain't easy. And I respect a fellow who stand up and say, listen, you need to be a preacher standing up when it's not easy. But I don't know what to think about a preacher who's doing that. He's in jail, y'all. In jail. Jesus said Pharisees are those that say, but don't do. Anybody? That's a hypocrite. I'm holy, and I'm saved, and I'm a Christian, and I'm a disciple. No, no. Paul says, this is what you need to do. And to the Philippians, unbeknownst maybe to some of he's doing what he's telling somebody else to. Sitting in the prison, writing him a letter, I want you guys to get as close to God as you can stand. Amen. That's a preacher there, y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Somebody said Paul's kind of Christianity would be hard-pressed to fit today. 
Anybody? Surely, amen. Listen, if Shirley says it's all right, it's all right. I don't care what the rest of y'all think. <coughs> Shirley says it's okay to preach for an hour and a half. That's what we're going to do. How about this? We, somebody said, today's Christianity is constantly being tailored. <coughs> Not just once. Anybody here ever lose weight and they had to take up your britches? <laughs> How about you ever got fat and they had to take them out? <coughs> you got some like me, you got fat and skinny, fat and skinny, fat. I got like pleats, it looks like a organ thing on the back. <coughs> Constantly tailoring what Christianity quote unquote means for our convenience. Funny thing to me, y'all, how all the changes we see in the church are making us less, less, and more or less like Jesus. Less holy, less obedient, less faithful, less dedicated, less everything. Mm -hmm. And I got thinking about that thing. Well, it's like we've caused our own problem. We in America, and maybe I ain't talking about you, but I'm talking about me. We've lived in such luxury, we're so accustomed to getting just what we want, we're so used to getting things our way. Is anybody else in here like that? I thought about it the other night. I don't have any business sitting in this restaurant with enough money in my pocket to buy a meal. I mean, come on, for real? In God's sight, he should have made me a grease spot a long time ago. And I'm not a good enough man to have a little bit of money in my pocket to go buy something for me and my wife. But there it was. I mean, a can of beans and a piece of stale bread is more than I deserved. But there I sit as one of God's being provided for. Amen. But y'all, if I don't get what I want, I get mad. You say, well, you're not very spiritual. Hey, Amen, I, I agree with you. I go to Burger King, I want me a Whopper. <laughs> well, why don't you go over here and get you one of these veggie burgers? Why don't you keep your opinions to yourself? How about that? I don't want to eat and get skinny. I want to eat and stay plump. <laughs> Some of y'all think, I don't know what else you. <laughs> I just like having it the way I like it. My wife said, yeah, uh, uh, yes, you need to get, I need a pair of work boots. You need to get this pair of work boots. No, I don't. I just had a pair of these, and they suited me, and that's what I want. Well, you're stubborn. <laughs> How do you answer a question like that? You buy those work boots. You wear them. I want to get these. They're bigger. They're uglier. It's whatever. Here we are. And somehow that thing's come right over in the church. Some in the church don't suit us. What do we do? Praise God in a pig's eye. <laughs> I ain't talking about nobody in here. Don't nobody get mad. I ain't going to sleep a week tonight if anybody gets mad. I'd go and give me a baby aspirin and take a third of it just to make it through the day. May not be nobody in Hey, we don't like it. I ain't going to go there no more. That just breaks my heart. One old boy said, well, we're praying about leaving. I said, I am too. <laughs> Is it going to happen today? Good night. Now, listen, this ain't what I pray prayer to, to pray. <laughs> Preach. It ain't on none of my notes, all 42 pages. I'm old. I didn't get this way accidentally. I've lived every long year. 40, it's going on 40 years close to it. I've been preaching. I started off thinking everybody that sat in a church pew wanted to hear the word of God. It took about three and a half minutes to figure that ain't so. And for about the next 25 years, I did my best to kind of get to the middle ground. Fully on middle ground. Amen. The meanest folk I've ever met been sitting in a church pew. I ain't talking about nobody here. <laughs> in this world, the people that caused me, well, I was going to say hemorrhoids, but you can't say that in church. <laughs> Heartburn, other age, every ailment I ever had been directly tied to Baptist sitting in church pews. You gotta be careful not to make nobody mad. I ain't gonna be careful not to make nobody mad. Period. I'm too old. I've got over it. 
child over the house the other night. Oh, what a darling. I'm thinking he's got potential. <laughs> right now, darling ain't the way I'd describe him running laps through my living room. <laughs> Y'all, I ain't a grandma. Some of you is his. I ain't. I'm grandpa. Hey. Time to clobber somebody, clobberize them and get it over with. <laughs> Loving is something you do because you've got to do it. You, then you got, I'm just seeing now if I'd clobberize that little fat headed rascal, I'd been blackballed, blacklisted, deep six. I'd be over in the ground in one cheese right now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You sit there and you be quiet and you let him tear up anything he wants to tear up. Oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Let me get back to Philippians. <laughs> Paul believed that you are to preach, whether it's, whether it's happy or sad, convenient or not convenient, if they like it or don't like it, so blooming what? But then I had to say, and I'm going to quit. I've got to quit. Fix that clock time. Good. Think about when Paul went to Philippi. Acts chapter 16. We don't have time to go there. You read down that they tried to go half a dozen other places, and the Spirit of God said, No, I don't want you going there. Right. Well, where do you want me to go? Fell asleep one night, got a vision, a man from Macedonia. That's like the county, if you will, where Philippi was. Come over here. Paul got up the next day. We're going to Philippi. What a time. God called us. It's going to be a big time like having a carnival. Amen. Got there on the Lord's Day, went to a prayer meeting. They had to have it outside by the river. I don't know what that connotes, but it must not have been a popular thing. <laughs> One family got saved. Next thing we hear, Paul's preaching and a demon-possessed girl starts hassling. You remember the story? Well... Some fellows had a business going, fortune-telling business. They were successful because the devil lived inside this girl, and the devil knew it up to tell them whatever they could charge their customers. Paul said, we have enough of that. Cast the demon out. Well, that shut their business down. Be like everybody stopping dying parties. He said, no more undertakers. We don't need you. Though. They got mad as fire, had them arrested, had them beat. Acts 16, I don't remember which verse it is. Let's see. And the preacher don't know the Bible. Please along about 20, 21, 22 somewhere. Paul and Silas laid up in jail at midnight. <clears throat> now I'm there because I did what God told me to do. Farther along, <laughs> I don't know all about it. Ain't nothing to muster with me. They had beat me to within inches of my life. I'm here just to do what God wants me to do. And I'm in jail. My feet are in stocks. You remember what they did? Right? Well, they start praying. They start singing. They start singing praises to God. I heard one old boy say, you know, there's probably something on this line. There sat Paul and Silas side by side in the dark, in the dungeon, in the mildew, in the dark, in all the filth. And it's as if the Spirit of God whispered to Paul, You know, it ain't been just a short time ago. You used to be the one that put fellas in jail like you are tonight. Because of you. 
But tonight you've been put in jail because of Jesus. And with everything else going on, it means the tables have been turned. 180 degrees have been covered. Now instead of being the bad guy, you're the good guy. And he said, maybe Paul just had to look to his side, you know, like Brenda over here. Silas, get them chains <coughs> rattling. Give me a little rhythm going here. They ain't had one of things like this. Everybody, you feel that in your bones? Some of y'all need to wake up first and then feel it in your bones. <laughs> he said, I've got the joy, 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 joy. Where? Say that again, son. Come on. Down in my Come, you know, you can I've got the joy, joy. What in the world ails that cat? Down in my heart. Good. No wonder. He told Timothy, it don't matter whether it's easy or not. God called you to do it, Hawks. So do it. So he says, Philippians 1, Paul and Timothy, to the saints of Philippi, who are the bishops, as the preachers, and the deacons. One last thought. That covers everybody in the church that's a disciple. Right? Amen? Amen. Deacon, bishop, saint. If you ain't one of them, it's like the old black preacher said, you're an ain't. <laughs> it took me a while on that one, too. <laughs> what about it, friend? You're here today. Is Jesus your Lord? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were to stand before him today, could you make that statement in all honesty? You didn't have to have your fingers going to cross behind your back. Is he, t is he ringing your bell, rattling your chain? Is he driving your truck? Or are you just shucking and jiving? I mean, it, that's, all, that's the bottom line right there. It could be different right here, right now. Give him your life. Just give him your life. That's all we ask. I promise you, you'll never regret it. I promise you, Jesus said, life abundant. But you're going to have to do it his way. We pray with him. <clears throat> Father, what in the world kind of a privilege have you done? Have you given? Have you bestowed? That God and men could sit down together. <coughs> don't believe in you, and not very impressive. But for those who do, it's just off the scale good. Lord, this morning we want you to know we love you. As disciples, we want you to make us hear and help us do what does not come natural. Or there may be someone here today that needs to get some business done with you. 